winterize in your RV without having to drink antifreeze the next spring. So one of the steps before we're putting it away for winter is black tank flush. So I'm gonna fill those up. Flush the tank's good. And pretty simple as for that, I'm just flushing that until I get a nice clear run out. Step two, I'm gonna repeat that process for the front tank. So while we're letting our black tanks flush, we're gonna come over to our water heater. Go ahead and pull the plug on that. There'll be six gallons of water inside that. We'll let all that out. Pumps off. And we'll go ahead and drain the water heater. Once you're happy with how clean the black tank looks, turn the flush off, open both valves for both of our gray tanks, and we'll let them drain. All right, so our tanks are all drained. Next, we will drain the freshwater tank. And we'll leave that open all winter. And then we'll open in the low point drains. That's gonna allow gravity to do work for us before we try to actually clean the system out. So we're gonna let those drain until they stop and then close them. And since we have the plug out of the water heater, we're gonna put the water heater into bypass. And that way we don't pressurize it. And then we'll just leave the plug out for the winter. All right, so the low points have stopped. So we're gonna close those up. So we close the system. Next thing we need is an adapter so we can put air to the system. You can buy these or you can make them. I've obviously made mine. And don't go throw in 150 PSI on your camper. So I just turn my regulator down to, I usually run about 20. I feel it's pretty good. So then we're just gonna take our adapter to our city water hookup. Grab our air hose. Put 20 pounds of pressure, air pressure on the water system now. And go around to every faucet, every, whatever you have, hot water, cold water, both sides. So since we're here, we'll just start right here with the outside shower. Cold side, hot side. So work our way around faucets, so. This is my little half path in the back of the garage. We did all that. That was the hot side. There's the cold side. This is the farthest away. This is in the very back of the camper, so this is the farthest away. So this is probably the most water in it. Make sure we get the toilet in. The kitchen. Hot side and cold side. Main bathroom. We're right on top of the cooking here, so they probably have enough water left now. Do the bathtub. When you do the bathtub, make sure you catch the shower head so you don't leave water in the shower head. See? That could be bad. So that was my last stop. I'm just gonna walk back through here. Double check everything, make sure everything's good. So we went backwards all the way back to where we started. We're good to go. Disconnect the air, move your fitting. Fresh water lines are now completely blown out. Good to go, no antifreeze in them. So now when we do break out the antifreeze, all we're doing is hit the traps. I don't know, I do like a quarter, third a gallon maybe, something like that, in every trap. And also make sure you always put it in the toilet. Keeps that seal lubricated and keeps it from freezing there. So I usually drop just a little bit so it gets down in there. So I divvied up two gallons of antifreeze amongst four sinks, two toilets, and a bathtub. And then that way everything's done. So the only place I have antifreeze now are in the traps and the drains. So come springtime when we break the camper out of storage, our fresh water lines are clean with just fresh or just compressed air went through them. So I don't have to worry about flushing the system and tasting the antifreeze and having that foamy stuff coming out of the faucets. And first time we go out camping, we're good to go with fresh water. So if you like the video, click subscribe down below for more DIY tips. Thanks.